everyone take your seat as quickly as possible. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. Thankful for everyone that's able to be here with us. Thank, thankful for God's presence. He's been with us already in our Sunday school. We're looking forward to a good service this morning. We'll start with a song from our church hymnal, 266. I love to serve my Jesus. A privilege sublime. 266. <clears throat> Let's stand, please. <clears throat> I love to serve my Jesus, privilege sublime. My life oppressed with beauty bright, sparkling all the time. Mid scenes that are unfading of rapture and the bliss, transformed. morning. Is God good? Amen. Do you want to praise him? Amen. Do you want to glorify God this morning? Do you want to worship God this morning? Thank the Lord for all that he has done. It's a privilege to be together in the service again this morning to gather together in the house of worship and to lift up our voice and our hands to God and give him the glory and honor that's due unto his name. Thank the Lord for each one that's chosen to come here this morning. You know, it's a choice that you've made and we're so happy to see each and every one with us. May the Lord bless you for coming to be in the service this morning. And I trust that the Lord will pour out his spirit in a very marked and special way on our gathering together today. Our first special is going to be a duet singing Down From His Glory. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Maybe that won't be our first special. <laughs> we'll ask Brother Ralph to come and sing for us. While my accompanist is coming, I want to thank the Lord for his blessings to me and my family. So happy to have my daughter and new son-in-law here with us this morning. Trust the Lord will richly bless them and each one for being here. I want to sing this song for everyone. It's one I've been singing a lot lately, but especially like to sing it for my daughter and my son-in-law. Not every day is going to be bright and rosy. Not every day is going to be full of sunshine and happiness. But every day we can have God's blessings upon us. If we stay true to God, it is for sure that he is going to be true to us. So no matter what happens in life, God's blessings are so great, we have no reason to complain. <clears throat> I have bad days, and I have hills to climb. And I have sad days And in a weary mind But when I look around And think these things all out All out I can't complain God is good to me He is so good to me More than this world could be He's so good can't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low I'd like to see them go And I ask this question Lord why so much pain but he knows what's best for me although I cannot see so I'll say thank you Lord I can God is good to me, he is so good to me, more than this world could be, he's so good. God 
God is so good to me. I'd like for us to go to the Lord in prayer at this time in our service. I wonder if there's anyone here that has a special request that they'd like to make known this morning. Brother Steve has a special unspoken request this morning. Um, yesterday, while yesterday evening, my Aunt Kathy, I don't know how many of you know her, she lives up on the house that my grandma used to live in when my grandma was alive. Um, she had a massive heart attack yesterday. And um, she, they had to fly her to the University of Maryland. And they I had to do an operation. It took about six hours for the operation. And they said it was uneventful. And the veins or the arteries inside of her heart had broken loose. And they give her a 50-50 chance of um, survival. And um, they're going to, um, she's in ICU at the University of Maryland right now. And when she wakes up, they're going to try to wean her off the ventilator, which is normal. But she has emphysema really bad. And um, I know the longer she stays on that ventilator, the longer she's going to need it. So I just asked the Lord to touch her. I had asked her just yesterday about coming to church with me today and um, she had said well she didn't know if she'd feel very comfortable about it or not I don't know what that meant but um, I just pray that the Lord would touch her and um, heal her and um, when she's well which I know the Lord can heal her and touch her in her heart even if we don't see it I think the Lord can do it for her and I just pray that you would help me to pray for her also Brother Doug, those of the saints that have left to go back home are reporting that they all made it safely home. Um, Sister Pauline is saying she made it safely to Louisiana. Also, Sister Sylvia Delbert Bennett, she's in Cayman, um, said that she's requesting prayer for her friend Sharon Metzalar and her family in the Netherlands. And they are tuning in right now. So she's requesting prayer for her. She's not feeling well. Do you have an unspoken request? Brother Harley, would you lead us in prayer this morning? Our precious Heavenly Father, we're so very, very thankful that we have another beautiful Lord's Day Amen. to wake to and the great opportunity to be in the house of worship. And Lord, we come with a thankful heart. We come with a heart full of praise and worship. For Lord, you have indeed blessed us so richly. You've been faithful to us in everything that we've done and said. And you've helped us with all of our trials and our tests. Yeah in our bad days, and Lord, you've showed her yourself strong to us in our good days, and Father, we thank you from the depths of our hearts, so we've gathered here this morning that we might worship you, for it is right, and you are worthy to be worshiped, and we thought, <clears throat> and Father, we want our worship to be acceptable. We want to worship you in the beauty of holiness. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. So we pray, Father, that you will be pleased to lead us and guide us by your precious Holy Spirit that we can do that which is pleasing to you. We pray, Father, for the request that was mentioned 
knowing, O oh God, that you are almighty and well able to take care of every need. So we make our appeals to you this morning and ask you to remember those requests. Though we don't remember them all, we know you do. And we know that, Father, you care for those that request and, and make their petitions known to you. So, Father, answer these and, and help us, Lord, to have uh, a greater measure of faith that we can trust you all the more. Now, Father, we pray that you'll be with our Brother James this morning as he delivers the message, giving that power, giving that unction and the anointing of your spirit that he can preach the word of God so that people will be edified and that they'll be willing to receive with meekness the engrafted word even to the saving of souls. Now, Father, have your way in what is said and done today. The, and we'll not fail to praise you. We'll not fail to give you the, the honor and the glory. For we love you, O oh God, and we adore your ways. So help us, we pray, in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. I ask Brother Paul to sing for us now. That will be followed by the Evening Light Singers. Wash 
I'd like to say how much I've really enjoyed this convention, and I think this is, we didn't come last year, and I really missed it. 
and I have really enjoyed it this year. And I'd li also like to say that um, our congregation is watching this uh, today at Brother Terry's house. And this song, we've already sung it once, but this song is really special to our congregation right now because we've, as you know, we've had a lot of problems and, you know, sicknesses and things like that. But, you know, we all believe that God is still God and he's still on the throne and we have had answers to prayer just this week. And um, we just like to dedicate this song to our pastor and his wife, because they're really going through a lot right now. I thought that it would happen to anyone but me. I never dreamed that I would carry this heavy burden on my knees. I never thought that I'd be standing just where I stand today. I've never known this kind of heartbreak. I've never felt this kind of pain. But you're still God when my eyes have cried a million tears. You're still God when my last hope has disappeared. You're still God and I know you'll make a way somehow. You're still the reason for this trial but Lord I know your ways are perfect and you've been watching Amen. all the while for to me you've proven faithful time and time again and I'm learning Lord to trust you even when I don't understand For you're still God When my eyes have cried a million tears You're still God When my last hope has disappeared You're still God Ushers, please. Lord, we thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you for that beautiful song, that you're still God. We thank you for your love to each one of us. You loved us so much that you died for us. 
You made the plan of salvation perfect in the clear, holy way for us to come back into fellowship with you. And we praise you for that, dear Lord. Just honor you and glorify you this morning. Ask, Lord, that you would bless this offering as it's lifted and used in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe. Displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Sing. 
two songs left before the message. The duet singing down from his glory and the choir singing standing on the promises.
Turn the service over to Brother Alvin at this time. Come on, on in. My grandson, Craig, and his wife desire to dedicate their little one this morning. And as I've said numbers of times, they are the ones that must do the dedicating. We as ministers can only do as Jesus did, ask God's blessings upon them. And I would impress upon Craig and Ashley's heart that it is their responsibility to teach and to train this little one in the ways of God, not just to provide them with food and clothing. And we trust that they will feel their responsibility in a spiritual way towards this little one as well as material. So it's my privilege, Brother James, I would ask you to come with me down.
We've had a beautiful song service. The presence of the Lord is here with us. It's my privilege now to introduce Brother James to be our speaker for this morning. We ask that you give him your undivided attention and hold him up in your prayers. I greet you in the name of the Lord. So good to see this beautiful audience here this morning. The Bible tells us that this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I will be speaking to you on a very simple subject today, on what it means to follow Jesus. And I'll be reading from the book of Mark, chapter 1, beginning with verse 14. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Amen. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you this morning and very humble submission to honor you as the God of heaven, the one that made the world. You are the giver of life, the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful way that you have provided for us to live. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to live it. You will help us, Lord, to be able to convince someone else that God has a beautiful way. We thank you for this lovely congregation here this morning. We pray, Lord, that your presence will continue with us, that your presence will be real in this service, that even at the close of this morning's service, some precious one may be added to this great kingdom of God. Lord, we pray that you will help the church today to continue to shine forth in this dark and troubled world, that others might be blessed, others might find their way to heaven, as a result of your beautiful church, the Bride of Christ. So we pray that you will be with us this morning in a very unusual way. And for what you're going to do for us, we're going to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I would like to say also that we have enjoyed this convention here very much this week. And, um, I would like to especially make mention of the children and the young people here, you have a treasure that many don't have. And when I see these little children coming down to the altar here, those are the years that you can mold those little children into the things of the Lord. For the devil is bidding high for every one of us. And also the older saints here that are the, what we call the pillars of the church or the, the fathers and mothers in Israel who are still standing firm in the truth of the gospel. And also those from other parts of the world and other countries as well that are here in this convention. I realize that things have changed in the world Things are changing, and I'm sure they will continue to change. But one thing never changes, and that's God. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I would not be behind this pulpit this morning, standing to try to preach to you a message if I didn't believe in this. I believe in this. I believe in the truth. I believe in the gospel. I believe in the church of God. I have 105 years of church of God background behind me. 
And I tell the people all the time, I've gone too far now to mess up. Too many miles behind me. Too many trials I've gone through. Too many tears help me to remember that there's too much to gain, to lose. Too many sunsets lie behind the mountain. Too many rivers my feet have gone through. Too many treasures are awaiting over yonder. There is too much to gain, to lose. I've crossed the hot, burning desert, struggling the right road to choose. Somewhere up ahead, there's cool, clear water, and defeat is one word I don't use. It's a beautiful song. I don't know who the writer of that song was. I was quoting from that song, too much to gain, to lose. And as I was sitting in the bench there a while ago, I thought of a song that we sing sometimes, not too often, but it is found in the redemption book. It said, in the heart of London City, mid the dwellings of the poor, these bright golden words were uttered, I have Christ, what want I more? Spoken by a lonely woman, dying on a garret floor, having not one earthly comfort, I have Christ, what want I more? So I will not be speaking to you this morning about feeding the church of God. We've heard a lot this week on that. And I am sure that this church will continue to be fed as well as the others. As they go home to their separate congregations, they will be feeding the flock of God. You see, this is a spiritual battle. This is a fight that we must fight to the end. And if you don't plan to fight, or if you don't intend to fight, you don't intend to be a Christian or a follower of Jesus Christ. This is a spiritual warfare, and it's not going to end until we lay this tabernacle down and we die in Jesus Christ. Yes, and we will be saved to sin no more. Thank God this morning that by His grace you can make it. Only by His grace you can make it. Only by His grace. And when we testify and tell others about Jesus and following him, we can only say, by his grace. Yes, it is amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. So I would like to leave a few words of encouragement to the church as well and to the other affiliated churches and those that might be listening to me um, live. Take heart, be strong, and continue to fight this good fight of faith. The Apostle Paul, with all the struggles and battles and fights that he went through in his time, when he came to the end of the way, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is later for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge shall give me, and not to me only but unto all of those that love his appearing. We are living in a time now that many people are losing the awareness of God and morality. That's the culture, the age that we're now living in. And it's very serious times, and we need to awaken to these facts. That's why Paul said those words that he wrote there. These are the times we're living in today. And we have to stand and contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Christian living is not among many people's priorities these days. I know that's a fact too. And it seems to be getting more uh, difficult to, to attract people to the church. I live in a land that is materialistic, very, very materialistic and affluent, and I would say worldly. And that, that caused a lot of people to be swept away. Yeah. You see, they see the things of the world and the world only. And those things are good in their place. There's nothing wrong with good things. The Bible doesn't teach against good things. As I mentioned here on Tuesday morning, what a beautiful sanctuary we have here. You have here. You don't have to worship God under the tree. These are blessings from God. Yeah. But material things are temporary. We're just passing through this way once. This world is not our home. We're just here for one time. Life is like a spring that you wind up and it winds out. 
or like a battery. It has its time and it's gone. Come on, churches. That's how life is. So we need to make the best of both worlds while we're here. I know it's difficult seemingly now to attract people to the church. And everything that the devil can do to distract people, he will do it. And to keep people away from a spiritual life. To keep people away from enjoying what God has for them. I told the church last Sunday night in Georgetown when I got home last Sunday morning. Never before in my ministry, all the years I've been living for the Lord, had the devil ever attacked me in that manner. Because you know why? The devil doesn't want us to tell people good things. And as we're, we're human beings too. And he gets on us too. Yes, he'll get all of us if we leave him alone. But we got to resist him and stand against him. Thank God the Bible says resist the devil. Stay fast in the faith and he will flee from you. The Bible teaches that all have sinned. The, um, Isaiah said all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. In saying that, then that means that everybody in the world needs to be saved. That's what Jesus came into the world for. To provide for us a way out of the life that we're living. This sin seems to be increasing in the world. Wickedness seems to be increasing in the world. And Jesus coming into the world did not eliminate that. What Jesus coming did, he provided a way out of that. That we would not have to remain there. We could have a life and have it more abundantly. Come on, church. That's why Jesus came. That we could have life and have it more abundantly. People today are specializing in seeing how evil they can get. What's wrong with specializing in seeing how good we can live? What's, what's wrong with right? Can anybody answer me? What's wrong with doing the things that are right? It's a beautiful life. Amen. Let me tell you, God has provided a beautiful way. Amen. When you get into this, you don't want to get off. Come on, church. Amen. You want to stay on it. It's a good way. It's a beautiful way. We live in a world, too, where there's much dissatisfaction. Everywhere you go, you see it. In. And because of that, many get very little out of life. Men haven't found anything to live for. And, and many see only the negative. They never see anything as good. And uh, many get bitter at life because life didn't seem to work out for them the way that they thought it would work out. Amen. You see, many don't understand. And there are things we never will understand. We could live a hundred years. There are things we're not going to understand. Amen. Why so much of this and why so much of that and why so much of the other? It's a part of the world. It's a part of life and only God understands it all. Yeah. If we understood everything, we would be like God. Yeah. But a woman by the name of Doris Mortman wrote, and I quote, Until you make peace with who you are, you'll never be content with what you have. Yeah. Thank God you can have a peace today that the world can't give you. Yeah. And that the world cannot take away. Yeah. This is a beautiful text I read here this morning. It's a beautiful text. I love this part of the Bible. And, of course, it began with John the Baptist. John the Baptist had come preaching. The Bible tells us, as it is written in, in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And then he preached of one that would come after him. And he preached, saying, there cometh one mightier than I, after me. Come on, church. Um, who, who, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I, I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Yes, that's John the Baptist. Then we have the, the temptation in the wilderness. Verse 12, and immediately the Spirit taketh him or drive with him into the wilderness, speaking of Jesus. And he was there in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast. And the angels ministered 
unto him. The devil put him out in the pinnacle of the temple. Look at all the worlds I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. <laughs> but Jesus overcame the tempter. And the angels ministered unto him. Um, that's what the Bible says. Now, I began from verse 14. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. In other words, where he began his public ministry. And saying the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Jesus is not coming back to set up a kingdom in the, in the clouds again. Come on, church. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Jesus said the time is fulfilled. It was fulfilled in him. The kingdom of God is at hand Repent ye and believe the gospel. You see, there are different ways in the world today that people get on to God or find God. You see, uh, the Holy Spirit convicts through a message that's preached in many times. I suppose that's more common than the other, uh, any other way. People sit down under the sound of a gospel message and the Holy Spirit convicts them and they yield their lives to the Lord and they're converted. That's one way. Some are moved by singing. Yeah. I've seen people in Cayman converted under singing. Yeah. The Spirit of God got a hold of them. In, in the special songs that were being sung, they come to an altar and give their hearts to the Lord. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is what does the work. Yeah. Some are convicted by reading the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Some are convicted by reading the Bible and they yield themselves to the Lord. I remember reading a story one time of a group of little boys that were out getting in mischief one night. And one little boy left the crowd and went, went home. They called him chicken. And all these things. And he thought he was a sister. But that little boy remembered a memory verse that he had learned in Sunday school. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So, some are convicted in many ways. Some are convicted by someone's testimony. Yeah. I remember some years ago, not too long ago, we had a meeting at home with four or five young people giving their testimonies. The Spirit of God melted that service. Yeah. Not a long sermon, not a big sermon by some uh, experienced um, preacher, but their testimonies, what the Lord had done for them. God moved in different ways. That bears a lot. Let me tell you, there's power in testimony. Telling others what God has done for you and the work he has done in your life. Now, Jesus called two men. The Bible tells us here, he called, first called two, Simon and Andrew, his brother. They were casting a net into the sea because they were fishermen. And Jesus said unto them, come. Come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And the Bible says, straightway or immediately, they forsook their nets, and they followed Jesus. You see, we have a lot of people in our world today who want to dictate to God. They want to follow God, but under their own conditions. It don't work that way. Whatever they were doing, they threw it down. Let me tell you something, friends. There's a lot of sin in this world today. And people get steeped in their way. Yeah. And in, in, a, in, a, in a life of sin. And they don't want to be bothered and told about it anymore. A lot of cases in the world today. But there are things you've got to drop if you can follow the master. Yes, we've got to drop a life of sin. And put it behind us and put on a new life. That's what, that's what following Jesus is. That's what it means. So he called two others, the Bible says. And when he had gone a little further then, he saw James and, and uh, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, who were also in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, 
and they left their father, they left their company, they probably didn't want to walk with him, they left their company in the ship with the hired servants and went after Jesus. Come on, church. So we have four right there in that call that followed the master. Let me tell you something, friend. It will be worth it all when you see Jesus. Yeah, the trials of life may be rough and hard sometimes. And not, I'm not telling you the Christian life is all a bed of roses. No, God never promised that. But he promised us grace. Grace. Come on, church. He promised us grace to bear it. So Jesus was um, weary one day walking along the, 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 the little road there. We hear about the woman at the well, the well of Samaria, where she had gone to draw water. The water was deep. And a, a conversation um, opened between her and the master. She didn't know who Jesus was at first either. Let me tell you something, friends. When Jesus comes, things change. When Jesus comes into your life, things change. He's going to change your life. She was surprised that the master would talk to her. She had a story to tell. Every human being in the world got a story. Listen to them. Listen to your children. Listen to everyone else that you get in contact with. They have a story to tell. She had four husbands then, and the one she had, she had five husbands, I believe. And the one she had them wasn't her, the Bible says. But you know, Jesus gave her water that wasn't in the well. He gave her living water and sent her forth to tell. And the Bible says she went out into the city. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I have done. Is not this the Messiah? And because of her testimony and what she had experienced, others were saved. Others of the Samaritan came and were converted. It's a beautiful story. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. We used to sing that little song when we were children. Jesus gave her water that was not in a well. He gave her living water and set her forth to tell. He'll give you living water this morning, springing up into everlasting life, friend. What a beautiful story. You know what Jesus told his disciples after that? I have meat you know not of. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Say not here, yet, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look Amen. on the fields, for they are ripe already to harvest. One soul, one soul he had won. The Bible tells us a story about a man by the name of Zacchaeus. He was little, little in stature. And he, in this case, he sought Jesus. Huh? In this case, he sought Jesus. The Bible says he ran before and got up into a sycamore tree. Oh, if we could see that much eagerness and that much enthusiasm toward God these days. If we could see that much enthusiasm and hunger and thirst for the things of God these days, what a difference it would make. Zacchaeus, the Bible says he was rich too. And, um, but Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And to make sure he saw him, he went up into the sycamore tree and looked down. But before Zacchaeus could do anything, Jesus looked up. Huh? He said, Zacchaeus, come down. For today I must abide at thy house. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those that are lost. And immediately Zacchaeus began to try to make things right. The wrongs he had done. To make them right. To be sure he had gotten the whole thing. Come on, church. Nothing in this life, again, like being clear with God to know that all is well with your soul. Amen. Nothing between your soul and the Savior. Nothing between your soul and your fellow men. What a good feeling that is. To be able to go to bed at night and rest your head. Yes, yeah, so what does it mean to follow Jesus? Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. And if you look into the book of Matthew, you will see it in the 16th chapter of Matthew, uh, beginning with verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For, what, for whosoever will save his life 
shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? You see, no man on earth will ever gain the whole world. But you would be surprised what can become our world. Those things which dominate us, those things which control us, become our world. Some people's world could be alcohol. Some people's world could be gambling. Some people's world could be drugs. Some people's world could be loneliness. All these things become people's world. Jesus came to give us a brand new beginning and start us all over. It's making a commitment, friends. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It's making a commitment. When the apostle Paul was called by God on the road to Damascus, he made a commitment and he never looked back. It's one of the most beautiful stories written in the Bible. He never looked back. With all that that um, um, prophet went through, or that um, apostle went through, the apostle Paul went through in this world, he never looked back. Yes, let me tell you, he said, none of these things move me. He made a commitment to God, and he stuck with it. You see, there are people in the world today that are more committed to an organization or devoted to an organization than they are to God. Well, never heard many amens there, but it's true, though. Yes, that's a fact. Men are more devoted to leader men than they are to God. We've got a lot of cults in the world today. It's a new walk. Yes, it's a new walk. And if you look into Psalms, you'll see the very first Psalm, you will see there, Blessed or happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Yes, it's work. It's toil. It's labor. We don't slip through uh, into heaven in a rocking chair. And I tell people all the time, you know, we, we're not going to sit on the wrong chair. Oh, God can take care of me. That's not going to happen. We've got something to do. Amen. Yes, God will take care of us, yeah, but we've got to trust him. We've got to believe in him. We've got to hope in him. We've got to do something. We've got to put faith to works. That's what the Bible says. Faith without works is dead. So if you look into the first book of Corinthians, chapter 2, you'll see a scripture there. First Corinthians, chapter 2, and, and, and verse 9, you will see a scripture there. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. What a life. Who wouldn't want that today? The Bible tells us in the night of 1 Psalm, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwell means to live or reside. We've got to live for the Lord. We've got to be in the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, overshadowed by Him. Thank God. One is sure and, and confident, he said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. It's a personal relationship we build with God, friends. We must have this for ourselves. And he delivers too. He surely shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise some pestilence. He protects it. Thank God he shall cover thee with his feathers. That's symbolical, of course. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
And the verse 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all his ways. You can't walk this road alone. You can't live for the Lord alone. That's not going to happen. You live this with the Lord. And he, through his power and grace and sustenance, that's how we live this life. And he has promised not only to save people, but to keep people. And see each one through to the very end. Yes, that's what this Bible goes on to say. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. That's verse 15. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. There's a song that we sing sometimes too which says some through the water, some through the flood, some, some through the blood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. God leads his dear children along. Let, can I ask a question? Are you a follower of Jesus this morning? If not, you can be one. You can be one. You can come and follow the master and help to carry this message on to somebody else that's out there perishing in a dying, sinful world. If you can't do any more than tell somebody Jesus loves them, that's a big message. Jesus loves every one of us, friends. And he cares about every one of us. He wants every one of us to follow him and to be his child. Every one of us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Every single one of us we God by the right of creation. Everyone can be the God by the right of redemption. Remember the story of the little boat? The little boy made and the little boy was floating a little boat in a war and the string broke. And the little boat got away and sailed away. Sometimes after, he went downtown and he saw this little boat in the, in the showcase of the, of the shop window. And it looked like his little boat. He was almost sure that it was. But the paint was all scarred and the sails were all torn. And it had a price tag on it. One or two dollars. He went inside and he purchased the little boat. And he hugged it up and he said, you're twice mine. I made you and I purchased you. That's what God does. He buys us back. That's what redemption is. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. I would like to close with a beautiful song here with the chairman's permission. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, 150, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Is there one here this morning? Feel the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you? Why not turn away from a life of sin? Walk down that aisle and give your heart to the Lord. He'll forgive every sin and give you a brand new beginning. Let us stand. 150 from the church hymn love. morning friends have a fun ending you live for why not come why not lay down a life of sin today why not lay it down friends? Savior he'll not pass you by while on others Throne of 
mercy. Is that one here this morning? Let a throne of mercy find a sweet relief. says, trusting only in thy merit, would I seek thy face. Would I seek thy face? Heal my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by thy grace. You know, it's a humble way. It's a way of, to, the way to the Lord is a humble way. It involves a humbling of our spirit, a brokenness, a coming to the Lord. You know, when Jesus called those disciples, they responded to him. They responded to his call. They didn't go out and try to reform themselves or to choose their own way. They responded to the Lord, and they laid down their occupations and what they were doing and they followed Jesus because of what they felt. They felt the call and they responded to it. And when we come to that humble place where we see Jesus and we feel his call and we feel his presence seeking us, asking us for our attention, asking us to surrender to him, and we see our need of him. And it breaks our heart. And we seek him and ask him to save us by his grace. And he will. He will. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling. Oh, don't pass me by. Let's sing the third verse.
once again, we are so very thankful for your time and attention, your presence here this morning. I'm so thankful for God's trueness to us, his faithfulness in meeting with us today. We just want to remind everyone that our evening service this evening starts at 6 o'clock rather than the 7 o'clock as it was through the week. 6 o'clock this evening will be the final service of the convention. And, of course, we have our afternoon service this afternoon. We invite you to come back and be with us again. There's an individual that has been has requested to be baptized, and Brother Harley plans to baptize this individual after the afternoon service, and he thought of maybe there might be someone else that would like to be baptized, and he thought it would be good to announce that this morning. So if there is others that would like to be baptized, the arrangements is for after the afternoon service. Thank you, Brother Doug. And one other piece of news I wanted to share with you concerning Dean. We've heard that he's done so well breathing on his iron that they plan to take him totally off the ventilator today and, and have him totally breathing on his own. So we thank the Lord for that. We'll be dismissed at this time. Brother Aaron, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Amen. Amen.